Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm doing this little video on my own right now just to uh, talk about something that I'm seeing a lot in the forum. Uh, a lot of people are asking me questions about why does my footage look all blown out suddenly when I'm using Premiere Pro uh, 2022? And what you're probably experiencing is color management for the first time and working with different color spaces. Uh, for those of you out there who haven't played around with high dynamic range televisions yet, you know, definitely go and check out what HDR can do. Um, most of the streaming services are delivering content in HDR. Um, and it basically means that you're dealing with a wider range of brightness values. You're also dealing with deeper and richer color because uh, these new formats are using a different color space. Whether you knew it or not, most of the footage that you've been working with up until this point has been in a color space called Rec. 709. And that, for a long time, has been the default way of working inside of Premiere Pro. Premiere used to be able to handle certain types of high dynamic range footage, but it would map it into a Rec. 709 color space, and it would kind of use out of range values in a way. It could store some information that wasn't typically part of Rec. 709. That's not the right way to do high dynamic range production work. And more and more, we're starting to see, uh, you know, sporting events broadcast in HDR. We're starting to see, um, you know, just about every piece of content gets graded today for high dynamic range. And uh, we're starting to see more and more people wanting to edit with high dynamic range footage, whether we're talking about, you know, some kind of dailies for a feature film workflow. We actually have... Um, some films that are currently being edited using high dynamic range. And the great news is Premiere can actually support that with a wide variety of formats. However, if you're still doing Rec. 709 production work, there is a possibility that you can bring footage into Premiere and it'll look all blown out because you're trying to view it in a Rec. 709 color space. It's an easy fix. There's an easy way of getting around this. And I wanted to take a moment to uh, show you in this video. Moving over to Premiere, um, the first thing you'll notice, I've got a Rec. 709 timeline. And something that you'll see inside of Premiere now when you go to Sequence Settings, let me just select my sequence here and go to Sequence Settings, you can see that there is now a working color space option here for your timeline. And if I click on that, I can see that Premiere supports a number of different formats for HDR uh, for different color spaces. Um, so when you're working inside of Premiere, the timeline itself actually makes a difference as to how your footage, footage is going to be viewed. But more importantly, the footage itself actually has a color space. And what is going on is Premiere is automatically reading the color space from your footage, and it's treating that footage as that particular color space. And what this means is, you know, you can be editing away and suddenly drag and drop, you know, some new footage that was shot on a newer camera that was set up in a, a you know, something like HLG, and suddenly see, ah, it's way too blown out. Um, the fix for this, um, this is something that can be applied in batch. It's something that you actually apply in the project panel. So I'm going to reveal this clip in the project. You can see I've got it right here. And I'm just going to, uh, let me double click on it here so you can see it in the source monitor. And in the source monitor, um, you know, you can see that it's blown out in both locations. Well, you might remember, hey, I know I shot this and it looked good in camera. Why is it looking blown out in Premiere? If I was in a high dynamic range environment and I had, under preferences general, uh, had this checkbox turned on, extended dynamic range monitoring when available, and this display color management turned on, what this will do is it will make sure that I can see the high dynamic range values that are in the footage. It means that if my computer monitor were high dynamic range, I could actually see the HDR values. This would look brighter than, than anything, you know, typically. And looking at the scopes, you can see here, I've got the scope set to HDR mode. And I can see when I've got my source clip selected, 
I am in the Rec 2100 HLG color space because that's what this particular clip is. So it's showing me color sp the, uh, the brightness values don't just go from 0 to 100. They actually go on a logarithmic scale. They go all the way up to 1,000 nits in this footage. So these bright lights here at the top are actually in... Uh, their, the values are achieving 1,000 uh, 1, nits. Um, and, uh, you know, so this is something that on an HDR television would look very bright, very vivid. In fact, this is some uh, demo footage that's designed to show, you know, a wide variety of colors um, in high dynamic range. Now, if I am working in standard dynamic range, I need to be able to convert this clip. I need to tell Premiere, hey, I don't want to use this in HDR. I want to use this in standard dynamic range. I want it to match uh, Rec. 709 values. And so the key thing to do here is to right click on the clip, go to modify, interpret footage, and new in the interpret footage uh, panel, you'll see there are some new color management options down here at the bottom. This is the place where if the footage comes with an embedded LUT, uh, this is where you can actually turn that on and off now. Um, it's no longer part of like a lumetry effect on the clip. Um, but most importantly, you'll see here, use media color space from file. It's currently showing that this footage is Rec. 2100 HLG. Premiere is treating it as Rec. 2100 HLG because that's what it is. Uh, it's not a bug. It's it's doing what the footage, it's showing you what the footage is. If I need to override that, if I need to tell Premiere, hey, I don't want it to be Rec. 2100. I want it to work in a Rec. 709 color space. I simply turn on this little checkbox here and I change this to Rec. 709. And in doing this, you'll see now the footage corresponds to the Rec. 709 color space. It's kind of compressing the color values so that everything fits within the 0 to 100 range, and now it no longer looks blown out. Now just know that if you have a bunch of clips that you have to do this to, you can select them as a group and go to modify interpret footage and do this for you know 100 clips or 1,000 clips all in one step. So while it is an additional step, um, it is a, uh, you know, something that you can do one time. You don't have to go in and do it individually for each individual clip. Um, I hope that kind of explains what the, the situation is. I hope it explains why you're dealing with this. Um, and, uh, you know, just know that this isn't going to go away. You know, we have entered this new era where some people are looking to the future and they're doing HDR production work. Other people are still delivering for, you know, flat screens without high dynamic range. They need standard dynamic range content. We can accommodate both in Premiere. You just have to know when you're bringing in high dynamic range content, you have to tell Premiere, I only want to treat this as standard dynamic range. And this is the way you do this is by bringing the color space, changing it to uh, Rec. 709 so that it's back into an SDR color space. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching.